All right, hello everyone. This is Kroda giving you a shoutcast and another game between Sas <coughs> Sase and Hasu. Game two taking place here in the Zelnaga Caverns. Game one, a very, very exciting matchup. Um, something I try to not describe Protoss versus Protoss mirror match at 1 3 2, but that really was a very close and clutch game, um, expa expanding beyond the simple four gate and into a lot of micro and a lot of strategy and decision making. So we'll see if this game lives up to its reputation and hopefully um, a reputation and does not disappoint as game one was a very exciting game. As now you can see a quick check to make sure that there are no proxy pylons and now Hasu making his way out into the, his opponent's base. Also checking that there are no proxy pylons down over here. Sase spawning as the yellow Protoss player once again on the south side of the map. No, sorry, excuse me. Hasu spawning as the yellow Protoss player on the south side of the map. Meanwhile, Sase spawning on the north side of the map as the red Protoss. Protoss versus Protoss mirror match. And once again, the production tab is up, and you can see that Hasu did delay his gate, uh, his probe mining just a little bit in order to get that gateway slightly, slightly faster. So you can see that there's a little bit faster as that probe now makes his way down. And we'll quickly see that there is that probe making his way down over there. So Hasu going to have a little bit of a more difficult time trying to figure out what the long-term strategy is. Um, uh, or trying to ha uh, trying to ha will have a difficult time just trying to catch up in the economic game. You can see the income. There was a slight difference there as the number of harvesters and also the, this probe has been walking around much, much longer. Now coming in to try to get some damage onto that pylon, but that pylon will not fall. And if I know Hasu's build, Hasu only has one pylon at this point, but that means he will be able to get his second cybernetics core in just a moment, and then he will be forced to get his pylon just a little bit later, but you can see how important that cybernetics core will be as it is now slightly faster as well, allowing him to get his four gate research or his gateway research that much quicker as well. You can see the pylon zapping away over here, a gateway currently just trading up a zealot. Now, um, Sase and Hasu most likely both going for four gate, but it's going to de determine on who's going to execute the strategy better. Um, I say execution, strategy versus execution. If you have a very strong strategy, but you don't have good execution of that strategy, even if your strategy would normally beat your opponent, if you execute it poorly, then you still don't really stand a chance. You can see an early stalker now coming out um, by Hasu, and that warp gate research just ever so slightly ahead, about yeah eight seconds faster so far. And we'll see what that translates into. Eight seconds when your opponent has four extra units and you don't, that is always a very, very difficult hill to overcome. Sase, his particular build was much, was a much more um, much more uh, just linear in terms of never stopping his pro production. We do see that there are additional gateways here now coming in from Sase. Meanwhile, um, Hasu also getting them as well. So Sase slightly ahead in terms of his gateways, but that warp gate research is going to be the crit critical path in trying to determine and trying to get that strategy. Stalker is attempting to destroy this assimilator down over here. Assimilators do have 900 hit points. One of the benefits, the, the only uh, gas collector that actually has 900 hit points and very, very difficult to clean up off of your opponent's base. And now he knows that his opponent pretty much has to go for a four gate all in. In comes the Stalker. The Stalker getting some damage onto that probe and down it goes. And oh, he did see the pylon, but he's not going after it. That was a very smart move as he could already suspect that there are more units coming in. And now this one pylon is going to get taken down over here. If the Zealot now tries to walk up that ramp, that is going to be a problem as more Stalkers are going to be warping in. And, and now this is that critical 8 seconds that I was talking about. These warp gates are now just getting done. And it looks as though, yes, Hasu has a lot of Zealots and Stalkers. And now uh, Sase also has Zealots and Stalkers as well. Both sides are going to be pushing up as well, getting as much damage as possible. Getting some damage onto a Stalker. One Stalker down. And, oh, two Stalkers down. So a Zealot and a Stalker lost. I'm not sure why. Um, Sase did not turn around to shoot back at that one low hit point Zealot as a second Zealot now coming into play and a third Zealot joining in on the fight. So it's going to be three Zealots leading the way against four with four Stalkers right, right behind. But in comes a Sentry as well and one. Oh, there's the Force Field trapping two of those Zealots. And now the Stalkers are trying to get as much damage as possible. But Hasu using that Force Field on the bottom portion of the ramp doing a great job. 
and Hasu, I believe, is just executing the four gate better. Sase now researching that Twilight or beginning that Twilight Council, and we'll start researching um, Blink in just a moment. You can see that there is that sentry there, and now uh, Sase just with a couple stalkers and a zealot able to contain his opponent. Sase needs to take this advantage and perhaps try to warp in a nexus and try to establish a stronger economic lead as he it does not seem like he's trying to warp in any additional units on on this portion of the map down over here perhaps a sentry or two to um, to force field and contain his opponent for quite some time stalkers are now making their way over once again and you can see the zealot slowly uh, returning all the way home Blink now being researched as well as more stalkers are getting added to this group. So he was saving up minerals while getting those additional simulators. And now it is going to be a Blink stalker battle once more. But Hasu uh, learning from the last matchup and knowing that his opponent likes to go Blink. And also getting stalkers with Blink of, the, of his own researching his own Blink research. Or starting his own Blink research. So it's going to be 7 stalkers versus 7 in this mirror match and also Sase now getting the robotics facility for perhaps immortals or observers. Those phoenixes that he got in the last game did not help him out as much as he would have liked. He probably wished that he got that robotics facility just in case Dark Templars did come into play. Zealot now looking around the map trying to figure out what exactly his opponent is doing as Hasu now warps in um, a pylon over here so he would be able to warp in units along the high ground here and then perhaps try to flank his opponent so if his unit, if, if his if these units actually try to make their way up or make their way down, more units now warping in as well. So Sase now getting a dozen stalkers inside the base, one stalker making the trap trick uh, trip all the way down, <coughs> running all the way back up now, as both players have yet to have yet to expand so far. Stalkers blinking up onto the high ground, and now in come more stalkers blinking as well. So both sides blinking, both sides are being forced to micro a very very large battle, but Sase. Yeah, a very, very tactical retreat there. But Hasu, with a blink research of his own, it looks like he's going to get enough damage. And oh, one of the stalkers blinked in the wrong direction. And a zealot and a stalker are going to get taken down very easily. Sase now in a load of trouble. This game not going nearly as well as he would have liked. Um, now being forced to play on the defensive end, he is going to be forced to get a force field down. And he needs to get that force field down faster. He cannot allow half of the units to get up that ramp. And oh, one stalker was able to blink up. And the rest of the stalkers will be blinking up in just a moment. And that is going to be a problem there. Hasu with an army of stalkers now inside the ramp there. That is a definite problem as those probes now making their way in. More units going to be coming in from behind. Sase doesn't stand a chance this time around. Hasu just simply getting the best of Sase in this particular matchup. Stalkers and... Stalkers and Stalkers just battling it out. I wanted to make sure I turned off the hit point bar so you can actually see how many Stalkers there are. With so many hit point bars, it's actually difficult to see the colors a little bit. But yeah, just doing a great job. And now Probes finally uh, fighting back. And then Sase giving credit where credit is due. Saying good game, very nice. And I must admit, Hasu, that was perhaps some of the best Protoss versus Protoss mirror matches I've seen in quite some time. Hasu executing his strategy absolutely perfectly, learning from game one about what Sase tends to go for. Um, Sase, uh, at the same time, also responded and got a, a robotics facility instead of a Stargate, which was a very, very, very smart call. I think if he actually did that in game one, he would have been much better off. But this time, Hasu just was able to counter this and take the uh, take the series 2-0. Hasu winning 2-0 and taking another win for Mouse Sports. So right now, I believe Mouse Sports is 3-0 against MYM. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay and this best of three series between Hasu and Sase.